Hello, welcome to Gemstone Tarot, where it is Friday the 15th of November 2024. We have a full moon in Taurus and Saturn goes direct. So I'm going to do a card and an oracle card for each sign and I'm going to timestamp it. I know it's a lot, but I'm going to do it because I feel like I don't know, it's a bit of a turning point and I don't know why I feel that. So if any of you know why I feel that astrologically, please leave us all a comment. We like to share or just tell me what you had for breakfast or what you're watching on telly. I'm always interested. I am watching Suits at the moment. I'm very late to the party. This is typical me. I think I'm 10 years late or something. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, nice little watch. Okay, we're going to have a Lightseer's Tarot card and an Oracle card for Aries through to Pisces. Okay, starting with Aries and moving through to Pisces. If you want a bigger reading, we have the mid-November readings, which are in the description box from Aries through to Pisces. Okay, with no further adieu, let's start with you lovely Aries. Hello Aries, you're getting the card off the top. <laughs> you're getting the card off the top. You only gonna got Mr. Glittery the Devil. Ooh. What can I say? You know this has shown up on my iPhone as people I know. <laughs> How sad am I? People you might know. This glittery man <laughs> with the green background. Hmm. Give him a call. Um, the devil. Okay. I'm glad that I'm dealing with Aries rather than some other of us wibblier star signs because this is a lot of energy. It's also when it's devil energy, it's quite sassy energy. I think you're going to be feeling your Ariesness. You may have a situation because this is a full moon. Okay. You may have a situation that's been kind of building up and sort of is on the point of breaking. And I don't mean that in a particularly negative or positive way. I just mean it's like, this is full, it needs to break open. It could be with a person, it could be a situation at work, it's something to do with persons or personalities. It could be in your own relationship with some, a close relationship with somebody. You, I'm getting channeled. You can't afford to be nice. Now, I'm not advocating being nasty at all, but you can't afford to be nice. And I feel like you know that. And Aries is very good with things like boundaries. And when you need to say your piece, it's one of those times when you probably need to say your piece and you might feel a bit sorry for the person on the other side of it. You understand their situation and their predicament. And this is awful. They're going to sound like, I don't know. Just if you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. You're right to feel that. So you can't give them an inch. Well, you can if you want to, but you know that it's going to slow you down. And sometimes in life, you've got to jettison the cargo. <laughs> the oracle card you get is yin. We got some push and pull here, haven't we? Because that's very yang energy, that devil card. Yin energy. You've got to make peace with it somehow. I still think you need to make the bold move, but you also don't want like a trail of guilt, you know, for years to come. That's just, you might as well have just not done it. Make your peace with it somehow. How you do that, will come to you. It's not immediately obvious, but make it yours and make it so that you don't need to keep looking back. There you go, Aries. Leave me a comment and check out your mid-November reading, which is below. Thanks, Aries. Taurus. God. Honestly. Taurus. What do we need to know for you, lovely Taurus? Sun, moon, rising, Venus. Ooh, greedy, you get two cards. Okay, Taurus. We get the Queen of Cups. Nice, and we talk about this a lot. 
in your monthly readings, don't we, about Taurians being um, more psychic than the books say they are, that, than the books say you are. You have a situation, because you also got the two of wands that just insisted on coming out. This is a decision to make about going in a particular direction. Okay, this is my particular direction, mine. Um, taking one path, taking the other path, but it's wands, so it's dynamic. It's changing all the time. But your inner knowledge isn't changing all the time. The goalposts are changing. Okay, the what you're going to gain from it, what people are offering, what kind of sacrifice it means, what kind of reward it means. Those goalposts, they're kind of dynamic. They're changing. Your intuition, your sense of what's right has always been the same all along. Okay, you can't, well, you can kid yourself, but it won't be a brilliant idea if you do. Okay, let's have an oracle card for you. <laughs> Oh, conflict and chaos. Yeah, you don't make the omelette without breaking the eggs. So, came up a bit for Aries as well. This is a time of sort of powering ahead. We were about to just, to be honest, go into a Mercury retrograde. So yeah, there's gonna be conflict and chaos, but you know what you know. Don't try and talk yourself out of that. Okay, you've got this, you know it. Thanks, Taurus. Gemini. Lovely Gemini. Gemini, Gemini, Gemini. Gemini. Check out your, I think it's you, you had such a good mid-month reading. It's in the description box below. I think it was you. It was so nice. It's one of those that doesn't come along often. Oh, why is your card hiding? Okay, that's why. <laughs> oh, God. Sometimes as a tarot reader, it's like there's a card like on my finger and I think, mm, that's the one. And I'm like, Ugh, and it's going, <laughs> but it came out. Ten of Swords. Okay. Ten of Swords, believe it or not, is a positive card. I feel positive with the Ten of Swords. The Nine is when there's a, a sort of almost an unbearable tension is building up of anxiety of things being above your head. You're like, Ugh. Ten of Swords, you let it go, okay? For some of you as well, this is what you've been through. This is what you're looking back on. You're like, and we can do that when we're safely out of the woods, you know, and we've sort of held it all together because we've been digging our way out of the woods, you know, doing what we need to do. But then you just get that chance to have a breather and look back and go, God, did I actually do that? Did I act, did they do that? Did I do that? Did we all get through that? Yes, we did. Okay, so I think it's a congratulations. You're sort of, I've got this channel vision of you coming through a hedge with twigs and everything still there. But you're like, I made it. I love that for you. Yeah, the Oracle card you get, new life, new beginnings, okay? It's like turning over a new leaf. <sighs> Love it, Gemini. Leave me a comment. Check out your mid-November lovely reading. It's in the description box below. Cancerians. Hello, lovely Cancerians. What do we need to know for you? You've had some really quite edgy readings recently, haven't you? Which has been interesting. This is no exception. Okay. I'm just doing my balloon bit. You get the lovers. The lovers. Chicka chicka. Okay, things are not gonna be boring for you. I keep getting quite hot cards for Cancerians. <laughs> I know, which is not always what I think of, you know, because lovely Cancerians, peaceful folk, but actually very passionate under that shell. Don't think that I don't know that very passionate beings and for some of you here there's a passion there's a real there's a passion uh -uh. <laughs> i'm getting all belly hill <laughs> uh -uh. um yeah i mean it's like it's hot stuff i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie it's hot stuff okay so if your relationships or 
whatever. I mean, it can be a passion for something as well, but I mean, you really have to love it. Like passion for a job or career or hobby or something you really love. Um, but for many of you, it's like, I don't know why I keep nudge, nudge, wink, wink, but I feel, ooh, you know, like that about it. It's a bit taking aback. It's a bit, oh, okay, fair enough. Um, go for it is what I'm saying. Absolutely go for it. And if you are, you know, looking for that, put yourself where you can be found. Let's have an oracle card for you. Okay, interesting. You get co-create. Build it and they will come. Okay, so get in mind what it is that you're after, particularly if it's something about passion, being passionate. You know, picture something lighting your fire, you moving towards it. Mm, this feels nice. Oh, lovely. That kind of thing. However you do it, you could do vision boards, you could do journaling, whatever. You know, everyone has their own way of doing it. But get manifesting. You won't regret it. And check out your mid-November reading down below. Apologies for the winking and the nudging. See you soon, my lovely Cancerians. Drop me a crab in the comments. Okay, Leo. Hello, Leo. Leo. Oh, God. It's not that card. It's that one. Ooh. I'm not going to look what the other one was because it's not that card, but it's hard not to look. You get the King of Cups. This is very nice. When you get the King of Cups, you have insight into something. For a few of you, this is a person. So this can be someone you're involved with, possibly a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, but certainly someone who is a bit esoteric. So it's like the poet, the musician, the dreamer, that kind of vibe. But this can also be, and I've been getting this for you for in the monthly readings, and check out your mid-November reading, which is down below. I've been getting this for you for about two years that you need to start a spiritual business or you need to follow a spiritual path that's been calling you for ages, possibly with a view to teaching or leading a group or something like that. I've had that for you for yonks and I've been saying it to you for yonks. Um, yeah, really, really important. Okay, let's have an oracle card for Leo, please. Yes, yes, that's it. Higher power. This is about your higher power, okay? Leos have this. Um, it's, it's quite hot and ferocious, a Leo higher power. It's not a shrinking violet. So yeah, if you're in, you're all in. And I can see why you might be having a little bit of a pause on the brink, but quite honestly, you're on the threshold, step in. Thanks, Leo. Virgo. Hello, lovely Virgo. Let's have a card for you and an oracle card. Ooh. It is two for you. Interesting, because I shuffled them as well. You also, this might be for those of you on the cusp of Virgo and Leo, because Leo got this one. King of Cups with the Ace of Pentacles. Very Virgo card. Okay. This is only for a few of you. Some of you are trying to work out if a situation is real or fake. I hate the word fake. Is real or unreal? We're gonna say that actually, because it's not as simple as that. It's not that one, one side is real and the other one is fake, okay? We wish life was that black and white, it never is. This is about the differences in between. There is a situation in which you are using your um, intuition to find out and you're wondering whether somebody is genuine, whether their words are genuine, whether their actions are genuine, whether their emotions are what you think they are, okay? You're putting it to the test. I call this biting the coin, making sure it's not a counterfeit. So you may have some suspicions around it. It may just there's just something you can't quite square with it okay i'm going to look at the oracle card it's that one for sure 
okay yeah you get here and now you can't tell at the moment is the truth so you're going to have to ride both those truths truths with one backside okay so it's like chariot energy you may even be dealing with a cancerian so you're riding two horses with one backside because you don't know yet one will get further ahead and then you'll know okay so stay in the here and now stay in the present stay present stay concrete stay grounded and it will it they will show you who they are that's it thank you lovely virgo okay and do check out your mid-november reading down below full moon and taurus interesting libra 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 full moon and taurus libra what do we need to know please that's interesting because that came out for virgo ace of pentacles what is for you will not go by you okay libra this is about oh hang on let me just switch on my camera that's better yeah Libra, this is about what's for you won't go by you, okay? Ace of Pentacles, very earthy card. It's about investing. It could be literally money investments. So you're at the beginning of something here. So this is about long-term forecasts, getting the right financial advice, um, deciding how you're going to live in five years, in 10 years. This is about putting money away for retirement. I mean, I know it sounds really boring, but it's important. It's about bricks and mortar. You may be thinking about buying a house. You may be thinking about, it's not about moving. It's about putting down roots. And that can happen also spiritually. Like who's my tribe? Who are my people? Where do I belong? If not physically, then spiritually. These are questions that are coming to you at the moment and that you're going to get answered, I think, as well. You're going to get some insight into what to do next in order to be where you belong and with who you belong. Your oracle card, which literally just fluttered to the ground, is round and round. This whole scenario that you're in, Libra, is not a straight line. You're not making progress along a timeline or like when you're loading a video. This is about you spiraling. So some of it's going to be messy, so it's but backwards and forwards. And also we're going to Mercury retrograde in a couple of weeks, so we're all going to do that. But you are gradually spiraling up to the top. And then when you get to the top, you kind of be like, oh, it's this. It's you. Okay. I know this. Okay, so truth is a spiral to you. And it's about finding out where you belong. And that's going to be happening to you. That's nice. Check out your mid-November reading, Libra. It's in the description box below. And do hit the like button if this resonated. Scorpio. Hello, lovely Scorpio. Love you, Scorpios. What do we need to know for Scorpio? Hello. Three cards just fell out. but there's one to come. Card for Scorpio. Are you in a situation that involves secrets? Okay. Ooh, I love this card. Scorpio, you get the glittery king himself, the king of pentacles. This is nice. Okay, king of pentacles can be bank manager energy. So this can be about money coming in and that feels because i'm itching my nose it feels that feels good so if you need to raise money for something if you need to go talk about a mortgage if you need to go start a business if you need to get some financial advice if you need promotion at work all of these things the king of pentacles yes we want the king of pentacles in our court you are also the king of pentacles scorpios in my experience are pretty good with money you're not usually spendaholics, but let me know in the comments section because sometimes I'm wrong. Generally, you're almost like bookkeepers, you're that good with money. 
there's something here about investment, taking it further, making, it could also be getting funding for something. Okay, like going to university or doing some training or something, getting funding. This looks good, but there's one particular person. So if you're applying to something, if you're applying to a job, you're trying to get in somewhere, find a particular person. Don't just generically apply to it or look to it. Look for this particular person. It's almost like someone's waiting there for you with their hand out ready. Okay, so you will recognize them when you find them. In relationships, this is about someone who is honest and reliable and well brought up. That's what my mum would say. That, that's a well brought up person. They've got a good moral compass. Okay, so you can relax about that. That's nice. Okay, let's have an oracle card for you. We get clean it up. Literally, this can be that you need to just do some decluttering. Not that Scorpios are very cluttery because you're not really, but for whatever that means for you. Okay, because we all have levels of it. You know, it might just be that you need to do a bit of micro decluttering. But also, don't lean over to help a particular person that seems to be quite needy. They don't need your help. That'll only be for one or two of you. Thank you, Scorpio. Sagittarius. Hello, lovely Sagittarius. What do we need to know for you? It's that one. Oh, that's nice. I think this card is Mercury and Sagittarius. You get the Eight of Wands. This is a card about momentum and it's about communication. It's the Eight of Wands, it's an eight. So it's like infinity, but standing up which is why it's a Sagittarian card, I suppose, because of the infinite of Jupiter. And also it's just got this vibes of information coming in. If you're waiting to talk to somebody or you're waiting for someone to call you or somebody to give you a piece of information or even to have a conversation, you can have a really good deep, because it's a full moon in Taurus, okay? Which is an earthy and it's a really decent full moon, a full moon in Taurus. So you can really have a conversation that's like, you know, it's good for you, like a whole, whole grain. It's a whole grain conversation. Um, it's effortless and it's fruitful. Okay. I like this. It's a really high quality conversation coming your way. If you've been worried about that conversation or it's been building up for a while, this is going to surprise you. Also, it's about expressing your needs and wants and desires when you get the Eight of Wands, you being candid and upfront and saying what it is that you want and need and desire. But I feel like it's going to go both ways and I think that's a really nice vibe for you. The Oracle card you get, Saji, is why. And this is about what Sagittarians actually do naturally anyway and it's about curiosity. Be curious about yourself. Why do you want to say what you want to say? And be curious about the other side, the other person or organization or whoever it is that you need to talk to. Where are they coming from? Stand in their shoes, feel like they feel. See it from both sides. Be curious about you, be curious about them and you're gonna love the outcome, Saji. Do check out your mid-November reading, which is down below. It's very interesting, your reading this time. Capricorn. Hello, lovely Capricorns. Hello, lovely Capricorns. Okay. What do we need to know for my lovely Capricorns? It is that one. Oh, Capricorn. Well, when is it? 19th, isn't it, that Pluto moves out of your sign? Thank God. Okay, it's the, uh, we're trimming the pastry. It's the five of cups. What is left that is ungrieved? What is there that you haven't dealt with or let go of? It's gonna be a week of, well, particularly because it's a fellow earth sign full moon as well. There's an opportunity to release here. There's an opportunity 
to release without prejudice, without barrier and without <sighs> vengeance. <laughs> I know that sounds awful. Without negativity. You know, it's compassionate forgiveness for yourself, for the other person, for the situation. It could go back years, okay? I would recommend the Ho'oponopono prayer. Go and find it on YouTube, loads of you already know it. It's a prayer where you sort of forgive yourself but you forgive others at the same time. It's wonderfully freeing to do and it will help you with this energy, okay? But this energy is helping you to move forward. So remember, it's necessary and it's actually positive in the end. But you know, it's a lot. It's a lot. It has been a lot. No doubt about it, but it feels like you're on the home straight. So I like that. Yes. Love this. The oracle card you get is time to go. It's time. It's time to... It's time to make an entrance, but it's also time to make the exit. Okay, and to do it in, you know, you can flounce around in a tutu, why not, with angel wings? We all need to do this from time to time. If you need to, you just do that, or have the attitude of that, okay? You don't just have to grieve this, you could kiss it goodbye. Thanks Capricorn, check out your mid-November reading, it's in the description box below. Aquarius. Hello, my lovely Aquarians. My lovely eccentric Aquarians. It's going to be that one for you. Okay. Aquarius, you get the five of wands. Not going to lie, that card can be annoying. Sometimes it just means that there are certain, and it's not deep, so it's not like, oh, you're in big trouble or there's a really deep kind of argument you have going on with somebody it's not it's kind of surface but it's those little things so if you're wondering why this doesn't seem to be working or you're trying to put a project together and like you can't get hold of anybody or you're trying to have a night out in your whatsapp group and not everybody nobody can make it you know everybody's doing something different it's like trying to put jelly into a string bag you know it's that kind of energy also with the five of wands, I think it comes along when there is a bit of a breakdown in communication with somebody. So whatever somebody says to you around the time of this full moon, I would take it with a pinch of salt and I would try not to react, whether it's good or bad actually. If you feel excited or if you feel annoyed, I would treat this both the same because either of these things could change, okay? Also, for some of you, there is a, I want to call it a fault line in the conversation and it needs to be corrected, but not now. So I would give it a bit of time and space, actually, if there is like when you're in a circular argument with someone or as a fault line with family or with a um, loved one that you can't, you just keep coming back to the same groove. Just give it some time and space. Okay, this isn't the time to have the big talk not right now it will be yeah the oracle card i get for you is the tribe spend time with these people the people you know those friends you have that can come over and they don't really talk to you and they just flick the kettle on and you sit together in lovely companionable silence stick to those people the the less talking you can do at the moment the better okay Leave me a comment. Check out your mid-November Aquarius reading below. And Pisces. Hello, Pisces. Oh, God. Okay. Two Wands cards for us. Five of Wands. Aquarius just got this. But this was sticking out just above it as well. The Nine of Wands. Okay. Be careful of cross wires is the first thing I get. This could be with family. This could be with friends, work colleagues. Um, Pisceans generally don't battle for sense. So in other words, if a Piscean is in, I suppose you might call it an argument or an exchange of words, 
generally the Pisces will give way, not um, because they're holier than thou, but because they don't, Pisces don't really like confrontation. Plus, I don't think it really works with our constitution. So we tend to just swim off for a bit. I would say you need to swim off for a bit, but pay heed to the fact that you do need some boundaries. I know it's a bit much, but we have got two fish going in different directions. Let one fish swim off and let the other one deal with the boundary. Because we've got the five of wands, someone's like incrementally trying to maybe push you in something. They may be trying to provoke you into saying something or, you know, it's not as sinister as that. They just want something. They want to talk to you. You may not have the bandwidth for it. Pisceans can only talk when the time is right. If you push yourself, you'll end up, you know what we're like, smelling salts and straight to bed, you know? That's what we're like as Pisceans. Everything is somatic. It gets processed through the body very quickly. Emotions can make you quite worn out if you're being pushed by something or somebody. So have your boundary about how far you can be pushed, how far you will be pushed and stick to it, okay? It's not easy, but send one fish off on that mission. Thank you everybody from Aries through to Pisces. Do check out your readings below for mid-November for each sign, Aries through to Pisces. Please do share this video as well if it has given you some value and I will see you tomorrow. Namaste.